to the Bay Area's Women Theater Festival, Amplify Artist Conversation. I am Sherry Miller, and I am an instigator on the Amplify team. With theaters closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, our Amplify 24-hour performance event, originally scheduled at Brava Theater for April 18th and 19th, with 70-plus performances by over 200 artists, is on hold. Uh, but we refuse to allow the need for social distancing to keep us from amplifying our amazing women and non-binary and trans artists' work. So today we're in conversation with Susan Jackson and Diana Brown, and we will talk with both of them about their journey uh, with the Southern Railroad Theater Company and uh, the work that they're um, preparing to offer. So you can find out more about the work um, on their website at www.southernrailroadtheatercompany.com um, and make a donation through their ongoing work through a Patreon account um, that we'll provide when we post this interview. And please stay tuned for the rescheduling of the Bay Area's Women Theater Festival Amplify 24-hour performance event by visiting our website at www.bayareawomenstheaterfestival.com. Hi, Diana. Hi, Susan. I'm getting a little bit of feedback from one of you, um, but thank you so much, so very much for being a part of our Amplify, uh, Amplify event and for joining us today. How are you both doing? I'm doing great, Sherry. This is Susan. Thank you very much for including us. It's a delight to be with you today. Thank you so much. This is oh, Diana. Hey, thank you. Um, we're just happy to have this uh, time and space to really get to know the artist who had been scheduled to perform with us uh, for the Amplify weekend next weekend. Um, we we curated uh, such a, a huge uh, performance event that there were a lot of artists that we were not familiar with. So this gives me a, an opportunity to get to know you both better. And um, I'm really grateful for that. Well, thank you thank for you. having us. It's uh, it's an honor to be here talking with you today. And it's so inspiring to see the Amplify Festival going forward uh, in this digital platform as we deal with our new normal. Truly, truly our new normal. Um, let's talk about what you all are doing right now uh, as we are adjusting to uh, our new normal, how, uh, what are you working on and what ways are you engaging uh, within social media to stay active and learning and um, just within the community itself? Well, Diana is, um, sh she's doing a lot of, of her work right now um, online, so to speak, um, because everything shut down. Uh, Diana is a teacher uh, for Leela Improvisation. So she's really, actively participating in that arena. Um, and we have discussed uh, doing more, ironically, <laughs> um, with the technical world rather than the live world of theater. So, so this is both a bonus um, for us and, and also, a, 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 in a way, a, an interesting disconnect. But we had originally, as you know, um, set up to do um, a live performance. Um, but th those are my... Those are my initial thoughts about that. Diana? Well, you know, uh, thank you, Susan, and, and thank you, Sherry. I, uh, I do teach online, and that's been quite an interesting transition over these last few weeks, bringing improvisational theater performance to the Zoom platform. Mm -hmm. um, we recently did a, Susan and I recently did a play. Susan writes the majority of our work. And she graciously allowed me to collaborate with her on a on a piece that I've had in my mind for a while about a Southern televangelist. And we presented that last year um, at the Marsh as a showcase to develop it. And we we left that character having uh, both a crisis of faith and uh, suffering a great loss. And so we're considering picking up with that character again. And this is from a play called When You Were Called. And this Southern televangelist, let me just put folks at ease, is definitely a person that was socially as well as religiously, religiously progressive and 
and looking to expand her thoughts while still, you know, being moored in some of her traditions. Uh, at the end of that play, she experiences a great loss and a crisis of faith. And we thought it might be very interesting to revisit that character in an ongoing episodic basis and her sister uh, who called her during a, a sermon and, and gave her this very difficult news. So we're thinking of bringing those two characters back um, to the virtual world and having that minister check in in the world as we currently find ourselves in. And the idea of commenting fictionally on something happening in real time is really compelling to both Susan and I. And I want to let her speak to that a little bit as well, since I've certainly been speaking at length. <laughs> well, what I, I guess what, what I'm trying to share with you, Sherry, is that uh, Diane and I have been working over 10 years on collaborations uh, with two female characters, obviously. <laughs> well, maybe. Um, and they've, they've shifted. Um, it, we originally began... Uh, uh, originally began with Diana doing a solo piece that I wrote. Um, and then uh, we became the Southern Railroad Theater Company and performed at the SF Fringe with two different women who did not interact. Um, but then as a result of the interest and um, the desire to bring the real Southern experience to the Bay Area one hush puppy at a time, which is our <laughs> mission statement. <laughs> awesome. Isn't that wonderful? Um we we started we brought in other people to our into our company. We did several years of of different southern characters, uh, strong southern women, um, and so the two women that are in Not Worthy actually once again, which is very interesting, began as a solo piece with the um, golly was it the Fringe again? Yeah, no, uh, uh, the Marsh. Oh no no I mean uh, the first character of. Um, uh, Lorena was at the the fringe. Yes. Yes, that is yes. correct. The, yeah. And she was the foundation of the piece that we were getting ready to put up in May. Uh, right. Played by Susan oh, your Collins. volume is a little bit low, Diana. Oh, thank you for letting me know. I so appreciate your patience. Is that better? It is. Okay. I'm sorry if you're getting a bit of feedback. I'm using earbuds, and I'm hearing. Uh, I am hearing the feedback myself. I'm wondering. I, I just muted uh, Susan. I'm thinking that that might help a little bit. Just pick your voice up. But yeah, oh, I can hear no you. No problem. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, yes, Susan uh, wrote this wonderful solo piece called uh, Worthy Enough. And we've actually expanded that now into, uh, Susan's expanded it into a, a two-character play. And that is what we were planning to put up in May uh, that we are now having to push back to hopefully November, maybe not till 2021. But the online piece that I was speaking about was uh, that we're looking to write was based on that play that we had done, the solo that she had co-authored, we co-authored together um, and put up last year. So those are the two things that we're looking at, getting back into real life on the actual stage with her beautiful play, Worthy Enough, and this potential online collaboration um, of this minister from when you were called. No, that's amazing. I would love to speak to this uh, beautiful collaboration that you both have developed and being able to not only acknowledge each other's work, um, but to find a space to um, help lift it up, um, whether in performance or even in uh, the development process. So Let's talk about where that began and what was the glue to really um, help you all realize that, oh, this is someone I can create with. Well, you have Diana Brown to blame for that. <laughs> 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 because um, when, when I wrote the original play that started the whole thing, which was called Blessing Her Heart, which was based on my mother, um, she performed it. And for the Marin Fringe, and she was nominated for um, Best Actress Award, and I was nominated for and won Best Original Play Award of that year for the Bay Area Ooh. Theater Critics Circle. Yeah. Ooh. So, so that, and, and Diana, 
Diane and I had worked together on a play, a short play about Elvis Presley back in the 80s. And we had not seen mm-hmm. each other or spoken to each other, not for any reason except life, mm-hmm. you know, life. And, and, and all of a sudden, you know, we, we, we reconnected and, and uh, um, it, it was just so funny because um, as we reconnected with this play, Blessing Her Heart, um, we found out we had a lot in common and uh, uh, we, and, and then Diana said, well, I love your work. I'm, I want to produce your work. And I went, oh man, I don't know, you know, and she said, no, no, she said, um, you know, um, this is what I'll do, and, and you just keep writing, and and so then we went to the SF Fringe and got Best of Fringe, and then the history continues um, with, well, Diana, I'll let you tell the story of Washington, D.C. <laughs> <laughs> Susan did look at me as though I had lost my mind when I said, let's start a theater company. And, but her work speaks to me in, in such an honest way. She's from Southern Roots. I'm from Southern Roots. And mm-hmm. let's just be candid. Southern, anything Southern is a little scary for a lot of the area folk. Yeah. So saying we were doing a play about doing theater based in Southern Roots was, was a brave thing to do. And I know one of the questions that you had asked us was, uh, you know, what has changed in the way we use our voice as artists and what changed when I started working with Susan was the ability to tell actual truths about our own lives and our backgrounds and our beliefs. We really wanted to dispel some of the preconceptions about the South and affirm some of the more positive truths. So yeah, when I, when I had access to this beautiful work, and, you know, you know, any actor knows you find a, a playwright whose work you resonate with. It's like, Ooh. give me more, you know, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, mainline that stuff. <laughs> so oh, as yeah. long as I can keep this wonderful woman writing, I'm going to be a happy actor. And I also feel that the way Susan writes reaches across the aisle it reaches all people and boy now more than ever we need a sense of coming together as opposed to focusing on our differences and then when she allowed me to collaborate with her and write something with her I mean I she's a playwright I am a nascent playwright I am just barely getting my little tiny baby wings but to have that opportunity to collaborate with her on something that had been in my mind for a long time was a gift wow well, the funniest thing was, Sherry, one of the funny things, and, and, and I, I, all I'm going to say is the Sonic drive-in and we're not in jail. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> no, I'm I'm the story. no, 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 no. I <laughs> want the story. <laughs> well, the piece that we, we were going to do... The piece that we were going to do for Amplify actually began as a joke because one of our... Not as... not as a result of a joke, but one of our actresses, her appendix burst. So we had to, so I wrote, I wrote a funny little piece just to cheer everybody up. And, uh, and, and then Diana said, well, we have to do this piece. We, we, we have to do this piece in case our actress friend cannot perform. I said, really? She said, yeah. So that kind of is how Rocket's Red Glare began purely by accident as a joke. Well, actually, it, it was also based on, on something else. And so um, that <laughs> well, it was whole based world, on the fact my truck got stolen. Yes, because because Diana's uh, 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 <laughs> girlfriend, partner, Stacy, her her red, was it a red truck? It was. It, it was a ruby red Ranger pickup truck, and it was that's stolen right. from in and, front of our apartment. And it got stolen. And so I wrote this silly little play about these two women and a stolen truck. And um, and then we ended up using it, um, and and that became Rocket's Red Glare. And all of a sudden, this whole world opened up of these of these two best friends, Peaches Nasterson and Amanda oh. Haley. <laughs> Amanda Haley Lynn Hollister, better known as Mandy. Hey, Mandy. Hey, Mandy. I've missed hey, you, girl. Hey, girl. And, I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Hey, are you still dating Salacious? I don't want to talk about that right now. All right. Well, you know, we got that. I learned the truth about him that's making me most uncomfortable. Well, there's nothing about Salacious that ain't anything but uncomfortable. Anyway. (laughs) Oh, that's amazing. 
amazing. Well, that was what we were going to, that was what we were going to do for Amplify were these two, um, but they're, they're, well, they're very unique because, um, uh, my character Peaches is the mayor of the town, and Nandy is a has an, an, a graduate degree in etymology. So we're we're, we're very unique. I cannot um, wait! I cannot wait! I cannot wait! <laughs> <laughs> These um, girls literally have possessed us, and we we miss yeah. them desperately when we don't get to perform them. So. I don't know, just sitting here talking with her right now is making me want to put these two girls on the on the internet. So you may be seeing people with Mandy. I want more too. They're adorbs. They're absolutely <laughs> adorbs. And um, they're attention grabbers. And I'm interested. I'm very interested in oh. what they have to say. Well, good. Well, that's what people that's what people feel about them. People, you know what people like about them is that they are so out there. But they don't. They're not. They don't fall into any kind of stereotypical um, uh, avenue. You know, we've purposely not ter- turned them into trailer trash or anything like that at all. We've we've given them. You know, or they've given us, I should say, because they speak to us. But they right. they they're very they're they're all encompassing about so many things and um and and actually very very loving and kind people underneath it all. Even though of course there's a little bit of jealousy and stuff, but. Um, yeah, we love those girls. We love those girls. You know, I, I learned, um, that we have to love the characters that we allow to embody us. Um, and we have to connect with them on that level of humanity and empathy, um, for their story and it's, and realize what a privilege it is to tell their stories, you know? And so... Um, just thinking about you two um, <laughs> uh, forming this uh, collaboration to allow two friends to come forth um, and boldness and and humor and um, and all of that southern charm that just oozed right on out. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, what a privilege, right? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Well, yeah. those those uh. That, that element of, of Southern uh, feminine, feminism, uh, feminist, um, th- those qualities are what Diana and I try to uh, find and bring out in all the characters, not just Peaches and Nandy, but um, Lorena and, and uh, Sophia, which are the two characters and Worthy Enough, and Janice, who is uh, Janice, and then now her sister Marion and... Um, uh, when you are called. So there's always very similar um, and important themes that, that, that these women face and, and are part of their souls aside from um, uh, hush puppies and uh, <laughs> you know, sweet tea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sweet tea and a little sonic drive through. <laughs> <laughs> Loyalty and making your friends feel worthy and supported is such a big part of, of the work that we, that we do and supporting women, women supporting one another. There's such a horrible trope that all women are cats and can't get along with each other. And it's so lovely to see things like the women's theater festival dispelling that untruth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just getting ready to um, ask about that, um, how, um, as an artist, um, finding your space um, to do your work, to practice your artistry, to be as creative as you need to be, um, let's talk about the, the things that tried to hinder you and uh, what inspired you to continue. Mm. Well, um, the character of Lorena in Worthy Enough um, basically stepped up to the, tried to step up to the plate after the 2016 election. And, um, she, she did, but it was at the risk and peril of perhaps losing her partner because it was, uh, frenetic and, and, and lots of passion. And so when we brought in the other character, the therapist, 
uh, Lorraine is still brings that very important issue up, which is you are obliged as a woman, a, as a person to step up to the plate now. And um, of course, that's apparent even more so now with 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 the virus. Um, it was and and I think that's what perhaps Diana and I feel is that we need to keep stepping up to the plate as as female artists that we can't let it um, we can't let it go we can't let it die we, we, and I, I don't mean to sound like a martyr because I'm not but um, you know even Peaches and Nandy get into it when mm-hmm. when when Nandy reveals that that Salacious voted for Trump that's a that's a deal breaker that could be the end of their friendship right and and I think that that's what we feel like is that um, th- through the characters um, that we we just as artists we can't get discouraged. I mean, I have to tell you, after the election, we were, I was pretty discouraged. Mm-hmm. And, uh, still am, but um, I discovered Facebook. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's my sense. <coughs> Pardon me. I was so moved by what you said. I uh, up a little bit there and started to joke. Forgive me. I have to agree with what Susan is saying here. And uh, it, there's a line actually that we're quoting. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, take always a, the way. Yeah, take a deep breath. We'll take one together. Oh, uh, you are so kind. <coughs> Do forgive me. Thank you, everybody uh, listening, for that patience. As we spend half of our lives now online, that mm-hmm. happens more and more. Um, in the play, we we uh, are quoting. Molly Ivins at one point about when did we just give the rights, um, all the exclusive rights to patriotism and spirituality. And I'm paraphrasing Ms. Ivins, but that really resonates hard for me right now. I am not happy with a lot of the things that are obviously happening in our country. And yet I still love our country. And I know that's sometimes not a popular point of view, but I love this country. And I would love to see it be what it can be as opposed to what it's currently become. So I'm not going to give up on America, but I definitely am not going to stay quiet about the condition that we're in. Although right now all we can do is survive this. And I'm just hoping that when we come out the other side of it, that we will start looking at each other as human beings as opposed to red states or blue states. Yeah. Or Republicans or Democrats. And I don't mean to get all political on you here, but I've never seen our country so divided. And I was, I'm was i really terrified for us as we go forward if we don't find some way to come together. So I'm going to get off my soapbox now. But no, that's, thank, that's not thank a soapbox at all. That. No, that's not a soapbox at all. Um, making space for us to share, you know, the things that are pressed into us is, is what we're, meant to do. And especially right now, uh, you did that for me before we started the recording process. Um, I had to tell you the sadness that I have been experiencing and you allowed me space to do that. Um, part of, I think of, of our ongoing work as citizens and as artists, especially is to, um, use our art, um, at its greatest impact. Um, through storytelling, through connecting with um, lots of people, not just one group of people, audience development and expanding uh, who we can reach right now is going to be very important. And um, continuing to challenge uh, the social norms and to use our voice, to use our artistry in whatever way uh, we deem that we can, you know, and, and that we choose. Um, but definitely being present in these times. I know I use my art as activism. Um, and um, I know that, that theater can heal. I've been healed by theater. And I know that um, there's a way that a story can just uh, keep turning and, and stirring inside of you to help you uh, uncover some deep truths even about ourselves as we you know, take this journey together. And we're in it together. Uh, we're meant to get through this together. And uh, my goal is to be stronger because of it. And 
and really rooted and grounded in something greater than just earning a living, um, but yeah. usually expressing every right that we have, um, and especially in using our voice and telling our stories. So I appreciate you both so very much. I have Aww. so this okay. conversation. I am inspired um, to find my creative uh, twin within this process mm -hmm. that I can continue to develop and collaborate with. I think that's an amazing journey that you both are on. And I'm just Thank really you. proud of you both. Really, really proud. So if you had to leave our audience with one word right now, what's the word, Diana? What's the word, Susan? Hope. I think it has to be hope. Yes. <laughs> yeah, hope. It has yeah. to be hope. Yeah. Mandy, are you crying, girl? <laughs> you, just, you know I am. All right, I am too. And I just put on oh, my Maybelline Fresh Lash. <laughs> oh, that's just amazing. Thank you so very much. Again, uh, thank you for your artistry, your excellence, your commitment. Uh, we are even, I know I am uh, even more excited to provide a platform for this performance um, and for you all to showcase both Peaches and Mandy um, when we're allowed to take up space again. And thank you all for listening from wherever you are. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. Um, you'll be able to find links to uh, the Southern Railroad uh, Theater Company on our website, on our social media page, the Area Women's Theater Festival. And uh, please, if you can, make a donation of any size to further the work um, as the commitment to our art is unchanged. Amplify women's voices with us in art and community, health and wellness. Signing off from the Amplify team. Thank you so much, Diana and Susan. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Sherry. You're welcome.